Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 1986 film From Beyond. Not to be confused with The Beyond, which is a Lucio Fulci film. This is a Stuart Gordon film, and R.I.P. Stuart Gordon. We lost him earlier this year. That is sad. Uh, the guy definitely loved uh, attempting to do H.P. Lovecraft films. Obviously, From Beyond is an H.P. Lovecraft film. Reanimator is an H.P. Lovecraft film. He did... Um, uh, one of his masters of horror films was, I think it was called Dreams in the Witch House. That was an H.P. Lovecraft film. He loved to pull from H.P. Lovecraft. So, uh, From Beyond, not my favorite. I mean, after watching Reanimator, uh, the comparison is not so great, I will say. I'm glad I watched this film. When I watched it, it was kind of blowing up a little bit in this horror group I'm uh, I'm in on Facebook. Because uh, a lot of those people have Shudder, and it, Shudder had added it recently when I'm recording this. So a lot of people were kind of discovering it for the first time, or rediscovering it, and just being like, oh wow. And there are good things about it, don't get me wrong. The practical effects are awesome. This film is 100% worth checking out at least once, just for the practical effects. They are great, which... You know, it's Stuart Gordon, Brian Usna is involved, who did Society, and some of the practical effects feel a little bit like the ones in Society, because there's a lot of, like, kind of goo on them. Uh, so, yeah, for that reason, it felt a little Society-esque. Um, but for some of the big names involved in doing the practical effects, you know, you have Robert Kurtzman, you have Greg Nicotero, you have Mark Showstrom, people who have done really big name, amazing film practical effects and it's on full display in this and they do throw a lot of practical effects into this film which is something i really appreciate now on the other side what i don't appreciate is it feels like there's a great concept for the story introduced and then it just doesn't go far enough like there's not enough story to it it feels like they get into a story and then they're just kind of treading water until the runtime runs out. So for that reason, I think the script could have used a lot of work. It just needed to go somewhere more. But anyway, I put too much of that up front, but that's fine. Uh, once, Like I said, it's directed by Stuart Gordon, who did Reanimator, Dolls, The Pit and the Pendulum, Castle Freak, and Dagon, just a few other ones. Now, not only was Brian Usen involved with this film as a producer, but so was Charles Band who, as we know, Charles Band uh, has done Full Moon Studios. That's his label, or his studio. <clears throat> it was written by Dennis Paoli, who had written scripts for Reanimator, Ghoulies 2, uh, and The Pit and the Pendulum, and Dagon, so has worked quite a bit with Stuart Gordon. Uh, also, there was input from Stuart Gordon and Brian Usna for the script, and obviously based off H.P. Lovecraft. It has Jeffrey Combs in it. I love Jeffrey Combs. His acting to me, whenever he's on screen, his acting is, it's not only good acting, it's fun acting. You know what I mean? Like those actors you see and you don't just look at them and be like, oh, they're a good actor. You're just like, I have so much fun watching them act on screen. And Jeffrey Combs is one of those actors for me. So whenever I see Jeffrey Combs in a film, I have to watch it. So, obviously, he's been in Reanimator, The Man with Two Brains, Cellar Dweller, Bride of Reanimator, Castle Freak, The Frighteners, Beyond Reanimator. Those are just a few of the films he's done a lot, but those are the, you know, the bigger names, the better ones. Barbara Crampton is always in this. I love Barbara Crampton. Uh, her acting from the 80s is solid. Uh, not the best, but solid. Uh, and... I think I like her most right now in the present because her presence on social media is unbelievably positive and she seems just like such a nice person. It's just really nice to follow her on Twitter and just kind of see the positive things she's doing and saying each day. And it's it's uplifting because, you know, sometimes we need that every now and then. So I think as a person, I think she's wonderful. She's good in this film. Um, although I think her character was... A little underused in a sense. She could have been a stronger character and I think should have been a stronger character in it. Uh, she was in films like Body Double, obviously worked with Combs in Reanimator and Stuart Gordon. Uh, she was in Chopping Mall, Castle Freak, You're Next, The Lords of Salem, We Are Still Here, Beyond the Gates, Puppet and Puppet Master, The Littlest Reich, just to name some, but she's still working. She's doing a lot. And then Ken Foree is in this big name from the past. Uh, Dawn of the Dead, Texas Chainsaw 3, The Devil's Rejects, Halloween, The Lords of Salem. So the guy's been in some good stuff. 
And he was fun in this film as well, I will say. Although I also think his character was a little bit underutilized. Although he had some kind of funny lines. I liked the little bit of like a comedic aspect that his character inter injected into situations. He kind of seemed like the dude that kind of like stepped in between um, Dr. McMichaels and Crawford uh, multiple times in, in, a, in many ways. So this film had a budget of $4.5 and it only made a bit over $1 million. So not a success. Not a success. Um, I And like I was saying before, like I see why it's like the story doesn't really go far enough. You just, it ends and you kind of like wanted more. Especially because you wanted more from the development of what was really going on with the, um, what is it, the Resonator the whole idea behind the resonator. I know they touch on it a little bit, but I feel like they need to flesh that out more. And then Dr. Pretorius, like his real motivations, I feels like his motivations were just set up as like this really vague, like, man, he's into like pleasure and a lot of kinky sexual stuff. So like, obviously he wanted to take feeling something to the next level. So he wanted to get to a parallel universe. Like, like give me a little bit more than that. Like it feels a little bit lazy, I, I think. And I don't know, and it and it feels also like Hellraiser. Even though Hellra the first Hellraiser came out a year after this film, it feels kind of like Hellraiser, and Hellraiser did it better, uh, and more in a more interesting way, but with less practical effects, though. Well, maybe less grandiose, I will say, practical effects. Uh, Gordon chose Combs and Crampton for familiarity of Lovecraft material, since he'd worked with them before. Uh, and they would know that he would end up asking them for very odd things in the film. So it's a, it's this kind of thing is I don't want to have to explain to new people that I ask for some weird stuff for these films because they're kind of weird films. And From Beyond, people have to admit, is a pretty weird film. It's, it's definitely weird. It was shot in Italy with an entirely Italian crew in order to cut costs down. Um, so even with that, it was $4.5 And from what I read... They actually ended up running out of money by the time they needed to shoot the finale of the film. So that kind of sucks because I wonder if the finale would have been even bigger, even more grandiose, and they really would have gone for it more had they actually had more money at that point. Because a lot of times when productions get to the end and they still have some extra money, with a film like this in particular, they'll kind of be like, well, let's go bigger. Let's do more practical effects. Let's do more things. Let's make it look bigger and look better. Just saying. Much like with Reanimator, Gordon had medical advisors to ensure that what the doctors and nurses did made actual real life sense. I, that's one of the things that, like, attention to detail that I loved about Stuart Gordon, especially when I was doing my review for Reanimator, which is on my channel, um, is finding out that he really looked into the actual medical aspects of things. And then he did it again here. Now, he didn't even need to do that in this film because there's not a whole lot of real medical stuff that goes on. It's mainly like the scientific, like everything having to do with the resonator and the parallel universe. So, but the fact that he did go to that length, respect for that. Uh, it was challenging, apparently, for Stuart Gordon to be able to cut this down to an actual R rating. Now, I assume I didn't see an uncut for Well, you know what? Maybe it was an uncut version. I don't know what I saw. But if it was an uncut version that I saw on Shudder, then I don't get how it had to be cut down. Uh, it's not that crazy. I've seen films that got R ratings that are way less crazy than that back then. So anyway... The large scale of the resonator in this film works very well in that kind of big open room, which is in the attic of that building. Uh, and the color lighting looks really, really awesome. I just think that their set construction of the room with the resonator is very cool. Uh, and they build it big enough that they can make sure that there's room for things to like really happen in there. And obviously they could, you know, move the cameras around enough. But it, because it's in such a big room and because the resonator and its apparatus, all the machines set up around it, are so large, it gives this feeling of it being a big deal and being something that had a lot of work and a lot of time put into it. And that just kind of adds to the aspect of the, the awe of this resonator machine. So I like that setup for it. And all those lights. The colored lights in this, the use of the colored lights, especially the pink ones, look really, really cool the way they shot it, and I dig it. I'm always for colored lights. 
they can really add a lot of aesthetic interest to a film, and it does with this one. The line, it bit off his head like a gingerbread man. I laughed at when it came up, when um, Crawford said it, uh, Jeffrey Combs' character, because it caught, caught me off guard because I thought it'd be more of like a serious type line coming when he said it bit his head off like, and then he said gingerbread man, and I just like, not only did I laugh, but since Charles Band was involved with this, it just made me think of ginger dead man with Gary Busey. So I was just like, oh my gosh. Just a side note. Early on, you see clear ties to Reanimator, uh, the whole thing about messing with science and basically coming to an unintended terrible result by messing with science. And it truly is one of those things of, just like in Reanimator, doing something because you can do it, not doing something because you should do it. And in this, in, in From Beyond, it's a little further than Reanimator because Dr., I think it was Dr. Hill, I think was his name, in um, Reanimator, he was going after the reanimation uh, serum because he wanted to be, you know, he wanted to do it. He kind of wanted to feel like a god. He wanted to be noticed within the scientific community as having done this amazing thing. Whereas Pretorius in From Beyond, like, he's not looking for notoriety. He's just looking for that next level of pleasure that he can experience. So it's, it's more of a personal thing. And I guarantee that he didn't, he really want anyone to know about it, honestly. So, but there's some ties between the films. And it makes sense because they're both Lovecraft material based on it. Crawford has a tough choice to make in this early on. You stay in an insane asylum or you go and recreate the experiment that is very, excuse me, very dangerous. Obviously, he chooses the second one because who wants to just spend their time in an insane asylum? I mean, maybe if he goes and takes the chance and does the experiment again, it comes out way better. But as we see, it doesn't. I did not see the reveal of the S&M room coming up. <laughs> and this is kind of something that's been used in the past in films, uh, especially horror films, as like a shock value thing, is this like sexual deviance aspect. And obviously it's very strong in this film, and sexuality in general is very strong in this film. Now... I would have a, a big problem with the sexuality in this film because uh, of just being there to be there, but it's not just there to be there. Like, it is kind of the whole reason that the Resonator exists, and that's who Pretorius was. So I'm not mad at it. Like, it's fine. It's just something that I noticed is, like, the whole s and It in the past has been used as, like, this deviant behavior sexually that people are supposed to be so shocked by. But... You know, over time, it's been very, very different. You know, there's a whole kink community now that has advocated for people to not, you know, put things like that in film to make it so um, uh, taboo, I guess. And then, you know, things like Fifty Shades of Grey, like that's kind of popularized, I don't know if I can say popularized, but made it a little more mainstream, the whole s and aspect of things. You know, there are people who are into that, and that's fine. You know, it's not my thing, but I don't care what people do in their bedroom if, if it's two consenting adults or more, whatever, I don't care. That's fine. But it, it just, I didn't see the s and room coming. So when they reveal something like that, you're like, oh, okay. You just don't see it coming. It's an interesting tie between Dr. Pretorius' desire for some stimulation and that leading to the, remu uh, the resonator creation. Uh, it's similar to Hellraiser, like I said, even though Hellraiser came out later. Now, that said, I would say the Hellraiser films are better, while the first two Hellraiser films are definitely better than From Beyond, in my opinion. I'm sure there are people who disagree. You can put comments down there, and that's all good. It's a pretty high concept with this film. Uh, having a parallel dimension existing around us, and we can only see it and interact with it when the right frequency is emitted from this resonator machine. That is really cool. And then the fact that they tie it into the, the concept of maybe having a play with people who have schizophrenia and then maybe being able to use the resonator in order, order to solve that mental illness problem. This is what I'm saying. Interesting, high concept, but then I just don't think they do enough with it in the film because they introduce these concepts and they just don't do enough with the concepts after they've been introduced, in my opinion. And that's one of the things. I just wanted more. I wanted them to go deeper. I wanted it to be smarter. Because when they introduce that concept, you're like, whoa, okay, this film's interesting. This is high concept. They're going to get deep. 
And then it's like they kind of back down from that. It's just like, well, here's the concept, and we're just going to play with it in the most kind of base way possible. So I, I just wanted more. All the crazy body stuff that happens to Pretorius is really fun. Uh, obviously, that's the amazing practical effects coming into place. Uh, whenever Pretorius showed up, I was just like, here we go. We're going to get some cool practical effects, and it did not disappoint. Nothing kills the sexual mood faster than a deformed old guy watching. The part where um, Crawford and McMichaels are like getting together and they're making out hard, and then all of a sudden this def this uh, deformed Pretorius pops up and starts like talking and making noises. Yeah, nothing kills the mood more than that. Um, there's a lot of sexuality. Oh, I already talked about the sexuality of the film, which is which I said I would normally bother me because it doesn't need to be there, but it doesn't need to be there because it's in the story, so that's fine. Just like in Hellraiser, it's a part of the story, obviously. So it's weird when they bring the forehead penis into play. That's what I'm calling it, like the forehead penis, because it's another sensory thing. That's kind of what it feels like, but I guess you call it like an antenna or something. Like, it's weird when that comes into play because... I don't know, it's just weird, like, you don't see that coming. And then the fact that, like, when it, it, it goes out and then goes back in so many times, and then also, like, the movement of it, especially combined with Jeffrey Combs' acting, where he's kind of like... Like, great acting for it, but it's just, like... It's kind of uncomfortable, to be honest, and it's weird. And then I guess they're kind of... He's seeing colors when that's active, like, he's not using his his normal human senses that it's all just filtered through that like forehead penis um i guess that's what's going on that's the idea i got but if you have a different idea go ahead put it in the comments uh when crawford was eating the brain uh in the hospital it appears that he didn't actually know what he was eating because he was being consumed so much by just going through the senses of the thing coming out of his forehead and then eventually when he kind of snaps back to it it goes back in his head he realizes oh my god i'm eating a human brain this is this is crazy but then i don't understand what the, what the thing is when he starts attacking people and he's like sucking their eyeball is he trying to get to their brain through their eye socket or is he legitimately trying to eat their eyeball at that point that just seems kind of odd to me like i just i i couldn't tell what was going on and it happens a few times so once again ideas put it down there where the hell did Dr. McMuggles get dynamite and a timer? That's what I don't know. When she escapes finally from the asylum, they're going to, you know, electroshock therapy her. And then she makes it back to the house and she's going to blow up the resonator. How, do, how did she have time to get dynamite and a timer? Where did she get it? Like, it's such a random thing that, like, all of a sudden she's got this big, big pack of dynamite with a timer on it. it makes no sense. It's very out of nowhere. Pretorius and Crawford fighting within the same body is an awesome scene. Uh, and when, like, you know, Crawford's kind of, like, coming out of his mouth, and then he, like, swallows him back in, and it's, it's a cool scene, and I don't know how you conceptualize that in the first place and be like, this is what we're going to do. And then further, I don't know how you make it a reality, but, you know, with people like Kurtzman, Nicotero, and Showstrom, you know, the talent is there to do it, obviously. It doesn't really feel like there's enough story, like I've been saying. It's just having a concept and then treading water in that initial concept. The main goal of Pretorius seemed to be getting McMichael, but why? Just for pleasure? It, it, it just doesn't seem like enough. Like, you understand why the Resonator was created in the first place, because Pretorius wanted to get that next pleasure moment, like that next level of pleasure, you know, another sense. So that makes sense. Then he gets sucked over to, basically, he, his head gets eaten, then he's living in the other dimension. Okay, we get that much. But then after that, the, all the conflict that ends up happening between, uh, mainly between Crawford and Pretorius, why? Like, what's the point? Is, is it because, it seems like it's because Pretorius wants to get a hold of McMichael, but why? Like, there's no real motivation there. It's, it, it's not fleshed out at all. And it's, it's just this kind of, like, confusing, why is this happening? Like, you need to know the motivation for the main villain. You know the motivation for him to have gotten into the situation he was in, but then past that, 
what's the motivation for all this fighting and everything going on? Like, there really isn't one. So that's another aspect of what's missing from the film, in my opinion. But that's all I have to say about it. I did enjoy watching it one time through. It does feel a little bit slow, and it's only like an hour and 25 minutes, so that kind of sucks that it feels slow because it's not long. So, but like I said, practical effects so good. Um, with five stars possible, half stars in play, I'm going to give it a two and a half because I do feel pretty, you know, in the middle. Yeah, if you take out all the amazing practical effects, I'd probably put it at like a two, but the practical effects definitely knock it up that half star uh, because they're fun. Like they, you know, the, it could be going very slow and you're not that interested and then the practical effects happen and it sucks you back in. So anyway, I would love to hear other people's opinions on this. I'm sure there are people who love this. Uh, there might be some people who hate it, some people in between. I don't know, but let's go ahead and talk about it. Uh, but do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Helps my channel grow and it, you know, motivates me to keep doing these. So if you could hit that subscribe, I would personally very much appreciate that. Uh, also hit the notification bell if you're going to do that because then you know whenever I'm putting up a new review or an unboxing or doing a live stream. But regardless, thanks for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.